Drivers, start your engines! It's MRN Motorsports Monday, the place for the latest news and loudest opinions, direct from the guys at the track. Presented by Outback Steakhouse. The stories, views, and opinions expressed on MRN Motorsports Monday are not likely shared by anyone, anywhere. Results may vary, so you should talk to your doctor before watching. What's up, Doc? Today's episode is brought to you by Hercules Tire. Hey, the car is on. Here's Woody Kane. Oh, boy, am I glad to see you guys. I knew you'd come back, Woody. And Joey Meyer. Just a reminder, if you're asking me a question, I'll uh, just keep talking till I answer it for you, all right? MRN Motorsports Monday presented by Outback Steakhouse on once again. I'm Woody Kane. He's Joey Meyer recapping the action from the weekend at both New Hampshire and Kentucky as the Xfinity Series was in the Bluegrass State. The trucks and cup cars were in New England and it's two for Toyota. Kyle Busch wins after a week ago. Martin Truex Jr. wins. Toyotas are awfully strong to start the playoffs. Somebody said that the Toyotas were strong a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. and he, they looked at him and like he had three heads. Yeah, they did. But he was pretty accurate. He was pretty accurate. Led well, every... there's a difference between being strong and yeah. being so far out there that led, nobody uh, can touch you. Led every lap but one. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, two Toyotas between Martin Truex Jr. and Kyle Busch. Uh, Martin Truex Jr. got involved in a, a unique incident uh, involving a we got to pay for our own blooming onions today That's because right. of Kevin a, Harvick got swept it. up in that wreck. Yeah, so it's not up. blooming Monday, but go anyway. Yep, and then had a lap car hit him from behind, the, the leader. Uh, I, I saw him at the airport. I said, man, your car was so fast, you caught the wreck. <laughs> 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 so we kind of chuckled. But it's unusual to see something like that at, at Loudoun, New Hampshire. Yeah, not only that, but you, it's unusual to see a playoff contending race chase guy, race playoff guy, getting wrapped up with a guy that he's passing. Those guys spin out. And then you have the leader of the race who's passing a lap car get hit from behind after he's checking up for the mm -hmm. wreck. So it's a very unusual incident uh, that we'll talk a little later in the on-off track, but I think the playoff point system is really working the way it was designed, whereas Kevin Harvick is not out of the playoffs right. as he would have been last year in the chase. He would have been in a must-win condition at Dover, and now he's not. He so lives that, to fight another yeah, day. Exactly yeah. right. That's the way it's set up, and that's the way it's working so far. More on that later. But first, let's hear from Kyle Busch from Victory Lane in New Hampshire. And the cup car, how much did this track change over the course of the weekend? Modifieds are here, late models are here, the trucks are here. Hard to adapt uh, every time you guys get out there? Uh, it changed a lot, you know, especially today it was changing a lot with uh, the substance just w wore off so fast. I mean, even in the first run of the race, I thought the substance was gone, you know. So um, having to start the race on those qualifiers, that was a bit evil for our car. We didn't quite like that. But after we got those tires off, everything else the rest of the day felt pretty normal. So um, great day for us. The Seminem's Caramel team was really strong, strong on pit road. Uh, strong all weekend with a fast car and uh, we were able to execute right. How much does this win change the mentality going to Dover next week if it does at all? I don't think it does at all. You know, we've been really good lately and we just need to keep focusing on what we've been doing, not change a whole lot and uh, go out there and try to lead laps, try to win stages, try to win races, get those points, build up a cushion for the uh, ensuing rounds. Our Kyle Ricky with Kyle Busch and Victory Lane at Loudoun, New Hampshire. Interesting that he <clears throat> mentioned the pit crew after he had the miscue the week before that got him back in traffic and he never could recover. Yeah, Gibbs changed the swap the pit crews from the 19 to the 18, and it kind of backfired on them last week with having a dominant car and then had a snafu on pit road. But one of the things he mentioned was the spray, the juice, the goop, the PJ1. PJ1 yeah. It's one of the last tracks that we're going to go to, or one of the fewer or less tracks we go to, that they actually treated the asphalt, a bottom groove and an outside groove, and they treated it on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So we had consistent conditions when we showed up Friday and Saturday, but yesterday we had a long, those long runs, mm -hmm. and it did change the track, and Kyle, Kyle mentioned it there. Absolutely. All right, we've got a big show coming up for you today. A first-time winner in the Xfinity Series, Tyler Reddick, takes the checkered flag at Kentucky. He'll be along. We'll also go into Joey's world. We've got a video to show you of just what Joey does in his other life. We have an Ask Joey segment as well. It's a lot to get in, and we're going to do it right after this. Stick around. I'm not blooming good, I'm blooming great. Put a shrimp on the barbie and sizzle my steak. Woo, I want that onion to bloom. And it get in my senses like a sonic boom. No rules, just right. So bold, so nice. And I'm so, 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 so ready for that Outback Steak tonight. Outback Steak House. That's what it's all about. Outback Steak House. Hey, Danica Patrick here. 
When I have friends and guests at the track who want to hear me drop pearls of wisdom during the race, I send them to Racing Electronics. You all right back there? I think so. Uh, I didn't, other than a, hitting a car, I didn't hit anything, but I, there's a tire down or something. If you aren't listening to all the action live, you're missing out. Don't forget to rent a scanner or fan vision for the races. Go to RacingElectronics.com to pre-rent for great discounts on your scanner and fan vision rentals. You're smart, got your own trucking business, making it happen. What if I told you there is a place online where you could connect with other smart owner operators just like you? It's an online community called Team Run Smart, where people share advice on truck maintenance, fuel savings, healthy habits on the road, and so much more, all to make your business more profitable. And it's all free. Visit TeamRunSmart.com today to check it out. You'll be glad you did. TeamRunSmart.com, brought to you by Freightliner Trucks. I'm Trevor Bain, and you're listening to MRM Motorsports Monday with Joey Meyer and Woody Kane. T. Bain welcoming us back as we get to, to the racing we had at New Hampshire and at Kentucky, but we've got another Ask Joey segment here, and okay. a fan wanted to know, you know, you see these superhero movies, and they go through the origin of how right. they became a superhero. So how did Joey become Joey? Hey, Joey, this is Matthew. How did you become a spotter for NASCAR? You know, I got in the garage early on, and my first job was the pilot. That's, that's been well documented. But I was a mechanic well before I was a pilot. And so I was actually working on the race cars, and then we actually had to have a spotter for practice after a rules change in the late 90s. And we didn't have back then the extra guys at the racetrack. We didn't bring our spotter to the race until Sunday. Mm -hmm. So I was actually there. I was able to do it. I put on a headset, and because I was articulate in flying on talking on the radio, I was able to go up on the roof and be articulate and so from the late 90s to early 2000s, I would do practice uh, for DEI. I would, I would actually do the, the eight car with Dale Jr. Ty Norris would do Steve Park in the one. And we'd go up and do practice together. And then it evolved. The better you did, the more they let you do. And then you became the second spotter at your speedway races and road course races. And then primary spotter I became for the 15 when Michael jumped into the cup car. Uh, and I've been doing it ever since. So it's, it was a, definitely an evolution. But the irony of it all was when I first went to the racetrack, I only wore a headset to protect my hearing. <laughs> so I had a headset on while I was working on the yeah. car, but I was trying to protect my hearing. And then having that headset on allowed me to listen to other spotters mm. before I even got into it and realized, you know, I, I remember listening to Kevin Cram, who spotted for Ron Hornaday at Louisville, distinctly remember that race. And then I remember saying, I want to do this and I can do this. And so I kind of worked, you know, I kind of pushed my way into that evolution. So I threw uh, an elbow or two and well, got your way up Well, there, right? and as the opening opened up for me and the opportunity existed and I was able to prove that I'm okay, I'm de decent at it. Uh, and the drivers kept uh, managing uh, our relationships. It kept evolving, and here I am today. Dedication, right place, right time. Yep. 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 That's how it all comes together. The knock on the door opened, and I was able to walk through for a little bit and show that I belong. There you go. And speaking yep. of someone who walked through the door, Tyler Reddick joins us on the guest line now. He drove the number 42 Broken Bow Records machine for Chip Ganassi Racing to victory in the Xfinity Series at Kentucky Speedway. First victory in the series. Tyler, welcome to the program, and congratulations, man. Are you still grinning? Um, yeah, it's. Uh, I think it's finally finally to finally starting to uh, set in that we uh, we won Saturday night and uh, just incredible race. Uh, we had a really good car and um, everything went the way we needed it to for for us to come out with a victory. So it's one of those nights that just go the right way. I'm sure Joey knows what what like what that's like and uh, you know when it, when it happens, it's truly special. You know, first wins are really, really cool, and you experienced that over at Team BKR, and now you got to experience it in the Xfinity Series in a part-time year, which is very unusual in itself. But let's concentrate on Kentucky. You show up, and you guys are the premier series there. The ARCA is the other series that you guys run along. But you had to battle a little bit with different rubber when you first showed up. Was it a challenge getting uh, your car adapted to that track early on? Um, it wasn't as bad as we thought it was going to be. We were, we were pretty patient. Um, I knew we were we were we were honestly a, a I think we were a top three car last time we were at Kentucky, um, so I knew that we were going to be pretty close. So we we weren't in a real hurry to get on the racetrack. Um, we could let the other guys go out there and work their rubber off for us. Not the tires are an issue or if tire fall off was a concern. Uh, we just kind of wanted to get a really good read right off the bat of what we needed um, out of our car for the race on Saturday night and. Um, we were able to work towards that through both practices, and honestly, the car is really good in practice too, and um, that made our decisions even easier. But uh, we we still definitely made it a lot better uh, from first to second practice, and we were really—I I was extremely happy when second practice ended. I was 
I got up the track, I was like, man, this thing is really, really good. Like, I've not many times walk out of the track after practice and think, man, you know, that's, that's, I, we got a really good car this weekend. Not, not because, you know, it just doesn't happen. These cars don't drive that good. And to have a car that good, you know, you've got something really special and we were able to take advantage of it Saturday. Tyler, you were able to race on Kentucky before the, the repave. Now that that situation has changed, how different does the track feel to you? Uh, it doesn't even feel like, uh, it, it's nothing like what it used to be. Um, but there's positives and negatives to that. Um, the positives for sure is we're going to have, you know, whenever it rains for, for, for a very long time, we're not going to be sitting around all day trying to get all the weepers out of the racetrack. Yeah. It's going to be more efficient for the fans. It's going to be more efficient for the teams. We're not, you know, having to wait till tomorrow for, for a race that we could be running tonight. Um, it'll, you know, hopefully cut costs down on hotels and everybody. Uh, make things easier for everyone. So, uh, you know, it's a new track. It'll take some time for it to widen back out. Um, you know, I think I thought, I honestly thought our, our first race there when there was a triple header, it actually put on pretty good racing for, for the state it was in. Um, but definitely when there's only two series and you have ARCA and just Xfinity, you know, and, and only a limited amount of time, you, you really can't get the track rubbered in. So for, for what we have, I thought the track was good. You could race on it. You could pass. Um, it was definitely really hard to make the outside work, but um, I felt like if you're, I mean, this, this is from us, I guess we had the best car, but you know, uh, it, it was still, you could still pass. Um, it was a little bit of work, but it was still fun. Tyler, congratulations on the win, as well as your announcement that you're going to race full time next year, 2018, over at a little small company owned by a guy that's trying to make his name for himself at Dale Earnhardt Jr. Uh, but this year has been a little challenging. You've raced 15 of only 27 races. What's been the biggest challenge as you hop in that car, but not racing it every single week? Um, it's just a learning curve. I've uh, I got so used to the trucks and having all this downforce um, that when I came over to the Xfinity series and um, as I transitioned over, and it, it's taken a long time to tr to transition to the less downforce of the Xfinity car. Um, it just you know I just had had some things I had to go through. I had to some growing pains. Had to change up my driving style to to accommodate for this car and um it took a little while to get get through um and obviously i'm still getting through it at a, at a lot of these racetracks i'm going to be going back to for the first time this car um such as dover kansas and homestead uh but it makes it really easy when you have a good group of guys around you that are doing a lot to help you mike shiplett's done an outstanding job of just making uh, my learning curve as short as possible and giving me a car that can go out there in the, in the beginning of practice and get comfortable with it and we can go to work um, definitely that helped me a lot in the first half of the year, just being comfortable and then, then setting our sights on, all right, what do we need? And, uh, when we went, it is nice to go back to Kentucky place I've been to once before. Um, you know, we started off pretty good there the first time too. We go back to a place second time, see time in the place is, is invaluable. And, um, I think it showed up a little bit, uh, this past time having, having been able to run that race twice. We talked about you sharing the car, but it's with another young kid, Kyle Larson. You may have heard of him. He's doing okay in the series so far. <laughs> you think? Uh, mm -hmm. Do you find yourself relying on his setups or his information, or is it two different avenues you guys go down? Um, you know, we, we try and run a lot of the same stuff. Obviously, what Kyle runs is really fast. And so, you guys still there? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're good. Absolutely. Oh, okay, sorry. My bad. Um, no, we, we pretty much try and stay on the same page, nonetheless, uh, whether it's you know, the 48 car, the 42 car, we try and stay really similar. So we're, um, you know, trying to knock out two things at once, uh, take advantage of the two car team. Um, a lot of the setups that Kyle had for us were really, for me at first, uh, just really front end positive and took a lot of time to get used to. Um, but I came from a, a vehicle that had a lot of downforce, a lot of side force. And going over the Xfinity series and having let less downforce, the car's going to move around a lot more. You just have to get used to it and it took time. So Kyle has really good cars on the Xfinity side. He, uh, he definitely likes them loose, and it's just taking a little time to get used to that. Tyler, we'd be remiss if we didn't ask you about next year. A couple of weeks ago, uh, the team and you revealed that you're going to be driving for Junior Motorsports next year. Tell us a little bit about that program and what you're looking for there, not to diminish what you've still got in front of you for this season, but, man, that's a, that's a huge announcement. No, it really is. It's, it's great. I'm, I'm excited to, that we were able to get that locked down for next year. Um, it, they're a good group of people. Uh, and obviously, you know, they, they, they're, they're competitors. They work really hard as well. Um, but nonetheless, like I told my guys Saturday before the race, you know, it was my first time back in the car since the announcement uh, at Kentucky. Or, or Kentucky was the first race back 
for me since the announcement. And uh, I told all my guys, I said, look, you know, I, I may know what I'm doing next year, but it doesn't change this year. We're, we've got four races left, and we're going to do everything we can to get the home and another championship. And I told them I'm 100% invested in it. And I told them we're going to go out there and get them tonight. So we have a really good car, and it, it panned out. So we're into the next round as of right now. And uh, I told Kyle, I said, hey, I don't have any pressure on you when you get to Charlotte. When you get the new semi car, you can just go out there and have fun. Yeah. <laughs> right. right. That was fun. Uh, that's that was fantastic. <laughs> Well, oh, well, Tyler, congratulations on your first win in the Xfinity Series. Good to see you get that done and continued success in those last four races. And I know you're looking for big things in 2018. Congratulations, man. Thanks for your time. Yeah, thank you very much. I'm looking forward to the last three races even more now. I know we got a good piece. And uh, uh, there, there are a few tracks I have a lot of fun at. And uh, I'm excited to see what we, what we get out of them. Good, man. There you go. Congratulations. congratulations. Good stuff. It's always cool to see uh, first-time winners. And we've talked to a lot of them on the program. And, uh, to see uh, a guy like Tyler who had a full-time gig in the truck series, got uh, uh, a few wins there, and then go to the part-time schedule, as you mentioned, that's kind of a tough transition. Yeah, first-time wins, you always remember. I can name off three first-time wins. My first win was Michael Waltrip. My first win with Ryan Blaney. My first win with Martin Truex. You just remember those mm -hmm. first wins. Uh, although he's in a part-time schedule, we don't talk about his playoff points because he's not able to gain those points, but he is doing owner points, mm -hmm. and those guys are right in the battle of that. But from the driver's standpoint, Junior Motorsports still leads the top there with Justin Allgaier and Sandwich with uh, third How about place. How the comeback by Allgaier? Yeah, Allgaier, two laps down with a tire issue yeah. uh, in the first 20 laps of the race and was able to race back from two laps. So another strong performance from those guys, Cole Custer, who swept the first two stages and really looked strong towards the end of that race. But what a dominating performance by Brennan Poole from Chip Ganassi Racing and Tyler Reddick for the victory. 11-second lead, which is unheard of yeah, nowadays geez. in that series. That was a, an amazing performance. All right, we got another break here on Motorsports Monday, presented by Outback Steakhouse. When we come back, we'll take you to show you about the flying side of Joey and do a little on-track, off-track. Stick around. Whatever you drive, wherever you go, Hercules tires will get you there. Whether you're running on dirt or running a job, our dependable, high-quality tires are the perfect fit for your needs. For unmatched value, selection, and warranty with industry-leading road hazard protection, there's only one choice, Hercules Tires. To learn more, visit HerculesTire.com or call 800-677-9535. Hercules Tires, right on our strength. I'm not blooming good, I'm blooming great. Put a shrimp on the barbie and sizzle my steak. Woo, I want that onion to bloom. And it get in my senses like a sonic boom. No rules, just right. So cold, so nice. And I'm so, 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 so ready for that Outback Steak tonight. Outback Steak House. That's what it's all about. Outback. Numbers. In NASCAR, numbers represent speed, passion, guts, and glory. Because numbers represent drivers. Numbers like 14, 88, 42, and 78. Numbers that say, that's my driver. Don't mess with my driver. See your number live at Kansas Speedway's first ever playoff elimination race. The Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series Hollywood Casino 400. Sunday, October 22nd. Tickets at kansasspeedway.com. I'm Eric Jones, and you're listening to MRN Motorsports Monday with Joey Meyer and Woody Kane. Eric Jones, another guy who's uh, shown a lot of speed here in the closing races. He uh, has a sixth-place run uh, at New Hampshire on Sunday, and a really strong season for him. But he's making the transition away from Furniture Row to Joe Gibbs Racing for next season, and it looks like the 77 car will not be back. I'm so envious because he has a heck of a mullet. He really does. It's He's a, rocking a, the mullet It's now. a beautiful yeah. mane. Between him and Ryan Blaney, <laughs> a beautiful mane. it's a beautiful mane. Yes, yes. yes. I mean, he, he, has to, he has to lather, rinse, and repeat. Yeah, he, he really does. does. He <laughs> has to follow the directions right. of the yeah, bottle. We don't. No, we don't. No. no we yeah. don't even get to the lather no, stage. No. That's all we need right there. That's it. All right. Speaking of uh, the, the question that we had from a viewer earlier about how you became a spotter, you mentioned that you started out as a pilot. So we had a camera crew go up. Uh, and check that out at uh, at uh, Checkered, Checkered Flag, Flag yep. Aviation. I keep wanting to say I keep wanting to say victory, but yep. that's not right. Checkered Flag Aviation. So here's the other side of Joey Meyer. So if I'm not doing Motorsports Monday with Woody Kane, hey Woody, how you doing? Every day of the week, and here we are at Checkered Flag Aviation. It's my home away from home. 
So let's introduce you to our travel partner. It's a 2002 Lear 45. The airplane will seat up to nine people. Uh, we normally have about five or six in the back, plus our two pilots, and that's a normal routine for us. Brad, his wife, and daughter Scarlett right up front, and then we always have our PR guy coming home, as well as our crew chief and possibly one other crew member. One of the things we're all aspiring to do in racing is winning. We get trophies, we get accolades, we get all kinds of stuff, but one of the unique features here, when the guys fly back into the hangar, we reward all the team guys with an ice cream. They get their own little ice cream cup from the checkered flag ice cream cone uh, cart, and they look forward to that, and we win a race, it's the first thing they mention, hey, I get to have some ice cream. Today was a little insight behind what I do personally, away from Motorsports Monday and spotting. It's the aviation hangar named Checkered Flag Aviation. We all attain to look to building a championship. We have ours proudly displayed with the team back in 2012. We hope to add one here for 2017. All right, pretty cool, but two things there jumped out at me. You, you don't get ice cream if you don't win? No ice cream if you don't win. That's, Whoa, that's, yeah, that's, that's a big incentive Exa right there. Ice cream, yeah, exactly who doesn't right. love ice cream? Absolutely. And the other thing, now now correct me if I'm wrong, but there was one shot there of the cockpit, and mm -hmm. it looked to me like there was a post-it note there. Was that like turn plane on, or what was what was no. what did that note say? So the notes, uh, we do a lot of note taking when controllers give us clearances. There's frequencies and routes and altitudes that you write them down for referencing later on. So okay. the, the I thought maybe it was something, a reminder like, you no, know, no. like a takeoff or, no. you know, something like that. No, put gear down. <laughs> yeah, very important. Yeah, very, very important. <laughs> yes, it is. Well, that's really cool. We'll show you an extended version of that. You can check that out on, on social media and see a little bit more of our visit up to the hangar with Joey there. And also like the, the wheel and the checkered flag on the tail. That's pretty cool looking. That was our that. original checkered flag foundation logo uh, mm -hmm. that Brad has since revi revised, but we've kept it on the airplane. I really liked it. Uh, just to, again, it doesn't have a whole lot to say. There's no words behind it, but the logo was really nice. All right, let's uh, transition now to a little on-track, off-track action where we talk about some things that are going well and not so well in the world of motorsports, specifically NASCAR. For you, what's on? You know, one of the incidents, we have to go buy our own Blooming Onion this morning because Kevin Harvick didn't have a really good day. He was running okay. He was fast. He was fast. Uh, he was right fast enough to find a wreck, you, you know, <laughs> and then got bombarded by his own teammate with the 41. Yeah. Last year in the chase, that would have been devastating. Those guys would have been showing up for Dover, having to win mm -hmm. in order to advance to the second round. Thankfully, the playoff point system established this year, we got rid of the chase, out with the chase, in with the playoff point system. It rewarded you for a good season all year long. Mm -hmm. And you kind of carried those points around with you. You, they didn't disappear. They didn't just wipe out they everything you've done out, for 26 which weeks. Which we saw last year. Yeah. Race number 27, those points are still here because we had a good year of 2016 uh, through 17. Mm -hmm. We were able to carry those points forward. Kevin Harvick is still clearly in the playoff hunt. He's in the top 12 of drivers. He's 10th in points. All he has to do is go to Dover, have a decent weekend, and he moves on. It's not a do-or-die situation. So it's a fantastic situation with the playoff points that NASCAR has created to reward the whole season with an incentive to win and rewarding those guys that win, but it doesn't erase the first 26 races. So kudos to those. We're seeing exactly how it's supposed to work. I look back at the situation last year with William Byron in the trucks. He wins, what, seven times yeah. and doesn't even get to run for the championship yeah. because of the way the math you just explained worked last year. Now that's far, far less likely to happen. However, it does mean that a guy who had a good regular season, say, for example, a Martin Truex, who has a huge war chest of those playoff points, is going to be awfully hard to derail until they get the homestead. He's almost assured uh, the ability to run for the championship, be one of the championship four in Miami. But that's the whole point of a long, you know, one mm -hmm. of the clamoring things the fans said was, oh, we hate the fact that we have these points and the gimmick, and a guy that had a good regular season can't even make the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Martin Truex had a really good regular season. He should be the lead guy, the main guy that has the big advantage going into Homestead. Unless he, again, has a catastrophic issue in a couple of rounds and loses all those playoff points, he'll be one of those four drivers right. at Homestead. For me, on track was, uh, and we've talked about this before, what a great value uh, New Hampshire Motor Speedway provides on a Saturday. You get the truck race, you get a modified race, and you get the ACT series yep. up there racing as well. So three races plus you get... Uh, final cup practice, mm -hmm. and you get uh, you get the, the truck qualifying, qualifying. as well. Mm -hmm. So you get a huge boost there. And uh, my understanding was the tickets were about twenty five bucks. So yeah, that is that is fantastic yeah. when you're looking for value. That's a that's a great value. That's on track for me. Yep, they did not get to watch Joey Logano practice in the second practice. Okay, now we're going to go to off track. <laughs> that's my off track thing. I, I get there I get go. the whole penalty thing. I get the penalty situation where if you fail inspection, pre race or tech, you you have to lose some practice time. 
I don't get making a guy sit out there on pit road. It's like it's like uh, fat shaming or something. What are we what are we accomplishing with putting a guy in a car who had nothing to do with the preparation of that car, by the way? And and I'm not I'm not supporting or, or bashing uh, Joey Logano here. It, it, it would I would feel the same if it was any driver. I don't get what we're gaining by putting him out there on 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 uh, pit road and making him sit there for an hour. Make him go sign autographs or something. Yeah. Well, the intent of the penalty was you were going to go out on pit road and sit for 15 minutes and then continue on to your practice. Mm-hmm. The escalation of penalties has increased from 15 to 30 to an hour. Uh, in the past, Landon Castle sat on pit road for an hour at Richmond, mm-hmm. but the practice was an hour and 20 minutes. So it still made sense because you didn't want to take the time to work your way out to pit road as mm-hmm. your penalty was over. You're wasting time. You're already there. Under so that it was a very unique scenario that NASCAR, sh- I, I applaud them for being consistent, which they, yes. had, which they get bashed for not being. But we had a 50 minute practice session for an hour long penalty. So they really didn't have a procedure in place mm-hmm other than to do what they've been doing consistently, put him in his car, put him in his helmet, put his driving gloves on, and go sit on pit road for your penalty. Without and, a phone. And, without a phone, <laughs> because you can't have one normally. Right, right, right. And oh, by the way, that's practice time is shorter than your penalty time. Sorry, our bad. Yeah, he didn't have to sit there the extra 10. <laughs> Once practice was over, they, they let him go. Right, so my, my question is, does he still have 10, 10 minutes, minutes out there? Time, 10 so minutes left. We'll see next week at if Dover. he has 10 more yes, minutes exactly to right. serve at Dover. My off track, you mentioned the great ticket prices. We saw the last fall race for Loud New Hampshire. Mm-hmm. Next, this time next year, we'll actually be at Richmond on the second race of the uh, playoff system. But the race that we saw at Loudon is being replaced by the second race in Vegas. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll have a triple header out in Vegas twice next year with all three series. Uh, and that'll be a good event for those guys out west. But the fans up in the New England area, uh, are going to get replaced with a 250 lap modified race. Yeah, that's going to be really cool <laughs> that's be as an well. Interesting weekend. And speaking of cool, I was thinking it was going to be uh, feeling like fall up there, but my goodness, it was in the mid 80s. I was uh, up in the grandstand for the truck race, you know, with the aluminum seats, and it felt like being in a microwave. I was kind of looking forward to some, you know, 60s and yeah, feeling I'm, the breezes and not so much. I'm good with it. I'm from Florida. I love hot weather. You're not going to hear me complain. Yeah, I'm I, was, good. I was just looking forward to that. I'm good. That's one of the cool things for me about going up there. All right, we've got a little bit of time left, and we're going to take one more break here. Then we're going to switch gears and look ahead to the following week. We've mentioned Dover. We'll talk about that next. I'm not blooming good. I'm blooming great. Put a shrimp on the barbie and sizzle my steak. Woo! I want that honey to bloom. And it get in my senses like a sonic boom. No rules, just right. So bold, so nice. And I'm so, 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 so ready for that Outback steak tonight. That's what it's all about. So what are your favorite drivers really thinking? We'll tell you each weekday on NASCAR Today Midday. Getting married has been incredible. I uh, wish I had figured all this out sooner. Get the latest news from the sport and the opinions of NASCAR's biggest stars. Changing over to Ford will open up some opportunities and possibilities and some just pure potential for the team. That's NASCAR Today Midday, weekdays on the Motor Racing Network. Live sports are the one true reality entertainment where a single dramatic moment can become timeless. In NASCAR, Motor Racing Network's live broadcast elevates your senses to the sights, sounds, and struggles taking place on the racetrack. Danica Patrick to the front of the field at Talladega. They are side by side behind her. Jimmy Johnson. The power of radio to the imagination of the listener. Tune in to the Motor Racing Network. Visit MRN.com for an affiliate list in your local area. I'm Ryan Blaney, and you're listening to MRN Motorsports Monday with championship spotter Joey Meyer and Woody Kane. <laughs> and world-class <laughs> <laughs> Joey Meyer. <laughs> I don't want to say that. It's on radio. You guys are going to use that. Take two. To MRN Motorsports Monday with championship spotter and adequate pilot Joey Meyer and Woody Kane. This run today was just a credit to everyone at Kyle Busch Motorsports. They prepared such fast tundras. It's a, it's a dream come true to be able to drive this thing. I just can't say enough, man, about these guys. I, you know, I'm the one that gets to sit up here and take pictures with the trophy, but, you know, my team are the ones that do this. Uh, they've been so successful with so many different guys. It's just a credit to them to, uh, to really show how fast this truck is. All right, I know you're, you're a racer. You want to win every time you go out, but does it take a little pressure off going to Vegas next week knowing you're moving on to the next round? 
It's huge to know that we can go and be aggressive at Vegas and Talladega and try and race for win more wins is huge for us. But uh, to everybody that you know works on these things and helps us out, uh, this one's for them. Congratulations. Thank you. Christopher Bell likely had enough playoff points to carry him into round two, but now he's got the win and the pass there as well as they head to Las Vegas this weekend. We'll have that one for you on the Motor Racing Network. The Las Vegas 350 comes your way Saturday at 7.30 Eastern time. Yeah, good run by for Christopher Bell. We expect, uh, you know, Kyle Busch, essentially a sweep for Kyle Busch. We had Kyle Busch Motorsports winning the truck and him winning the cup race. Uh, but a good points day for them. Uh, but well, 11, in the top 11, we had six guys in the playoff points. So, all the guys that ran good in the year are starting mm -hmm. to run good in the playoffs, and that's what we expect. Absolutely, and we're looking for more when we head to Vegas this weekend. We also have Dover to think about, where the Xfinity Series and the uh, Cup Series are going to run. Giant concrete bowl, sort of shaped a little bit like Bristol, but man, you fall off in those turns, and it feels like your stomach is up in your throat. You know, it's definitely a track that when you go to, you're amazed at the depth of the corners. Uh, but we all expect to show up, and Jimmy Johnson's going to win, right? Mm. That's just the way it's going to be, and where everybody else is running for second. But he needs to have a solid performance. He can't make any hiccups uh, to get to that second round of the playoffs. The Xfinity Series, the Drive Sober 200, comes your way on Saturday afternoon at 2 Eastern time. We'll have practices as well for the Cup Series, the Apache Warrior 400 before Sunday afternoon's race there. Uh, and uh, we haven't heard any talk of any PJ1 or VHT or anything like that at Dover. No, one of the cool things this weekend with the playoff point systems is we've confirmed four drivers have moved on in the Cup Series. That's Martin Truex, Kyle Busch, Kyle Larson, and Brad Keselowski mm -hmm. have punched their ticket to the second round of the playoffs. So that's four. So we have eight more guys. A couple by victories and a couple by, by points math. already. Yep, yeah. by points. So now we have four, but we have 12 total. So we have eight guys that are trying to work their way through Dover. They can't have any problems. A guy like Kevin Harvick's already had his one problem, but he sits 10th in points. He just needs to have a decent weekend. But you got the Kurt Bushes of the world, the Ricky Stenhouse of the world. They better pick their game up if they want to move on. They really do have a, a tall task in front of them. We'll have it all for you on Motor Racing Network. Check MRN.com for a complete look at the schedules. Don't forget Tuesday night, NASCAR Live comes your way, 7 o'clock Eastern time as well. And then we'll have full practices this weekend, qualifying and the race. Get the MRN app. It's free and you can punch it up anytime anywhere to check out what's going on on the Motor Racing Network. He's Joey Meyer. I'm Woody Kane. We'll see you right back here next week to talk about Dover and Las Vegas on MRN Motorsports Monday presented by Outback Steakhouse. MRN Motorsports Monday is presented by Outback Steakhouse. Tune in every Monday for another exciting episode right here on MRN.com. Brought to you by Hercules Tires. MRN Motorsports Monday is also available on demand in MRN.com's Media Center, on our Facebook page, on YouTube, and in iTunes or the Google Play Store. MRN Motorsports Monday is a production of the Motor Racing Network.